Well, thank you, Eva. I'm here today uh, because I'm celebrating the opening of my ninth Center of Excellence for Penile Implants in the world. And I have done more penile implants than anybody in the world over the last 50 years. And uh, about eight years ago, I decided uh, to start recognizing uh, some younger men uh, who are in cities outside the United States uh, who have uh, taken a step forward and become a center of excellence in their communities and in their region. And so to, today we're celebrating Dr. Muhammad Hamdan of Amman, Jordan, uh, for this event. Uh, he is my ninth uh, center of excellence. Uh, the first one was in Germany, and I believe there are two in Germany, one in Spain, one in UK, uh, one in Qatar, one in South Korea. Uh, and it's a great honor uh, because it's so rare that uh, we have somebody that excels at penile implants. Now, everybody wants to know what the qualifications are for becoming a center of excellence. Well, first of all, I have to have trained you to some degree in, in your training. And in 2002, I came here and actually scrubbed in the hospital on penile implants uh, with Dr. Hamdan. And at that time, he was somewhat of a rookie, uh, but he was so enthusiastic and so focused that I knew he would do very well. And that year I was here in 2002, he did less than 100, but it was only about his third year of doing the inflatable penile prosthesis. Uh, this year, when I come back, uh, we've done eight cases together, and uh, he's now doing 250 a year here and 50 a year in Bahrain. So uh, that makes him maybe the second largest implanter outside the United States in the world. And he's still a young man, and he's still enthusiastic about growing his practice. So I, I feel like uh, it was a title well given and that he's going to continue to make us all proud. So your first time here was in 2021? I mean, yes, correct. So besides the high volume of implants that Dr. Hamdan registered, uh, what what's particularly uh, noticeable about him as a surgeon? Well, we have other criteria also. We uh, we have to have someone who publishes uh, in our peer-reviewed literature, and we have also have to have someone who has a passion for teaching, and Dr. Hamdan has that. He's trained doctors from the entire Gulf region here, Bahrain, Kuwait, Egypt, uh, Saudi, uh, and these doctors have gone back to their home countries and excelled at penile implants also. So. You have to have individually done a lot. You have to be trained by me. You have to have a passion for teaching and motivating other young doctors. And you have to be published in the peer-reviewed literature. Well, I'm sure it's a big honor for him to be uh, one of the unique center of excellence uh, in the Arab region. Um, what could be uh, the pathway for young implanters, first of all, to get initiated on penile implants and to follow Dr. Hamdan's steps and scale up to become themselves a reference in their own region? Well, uh, it's difficult to get training. That's the hardest part because in most residency programs around the world, there is not a focused prosthetic urologist. So you have to go out of the country uh, and then you have to be able to attract uh, a, a doctor to come here and babysit you while you do your first few cases. So it's not an easy chore, but uh, guys find a way to do it. Uh, one of Dr. Uh, Hamdan's present students is in Iraq, and he's going to do probably 50 this year in his first year. And... There's never been anybody in Iraq that ever did more than 10, and yet he caught the fever. He's come here. Dr. Hamden has gone to Iraq to train him, and he was here during my cases. So uh, 
it's not easy, but it can be done. More than three decades ago, um, you started uh, the literature and the engineering on what became the third or fourth generation of inflatable benile implants. So there's a lot of teaching material out there, and this can entice young physicians to look at them and start you know, trying to do implantations by themselves. Why is that dangerous? And why should the patient be referred to a skills, skilled surgeon and maybe start by looking at the center of ex excellence and not only a price-based uh, available urologist who could do, do this for them for a lower price? Well, you know, is, uh, we're, when we're talking about uh, surgeons who don't do the surgery very often, those are the ones that are more likely to develop a complication. And unfortunately, the organ that we're working on is your best friend. And it's one thing if you get a complication in your elbow, but if you get a complication in your penis, it's your best friend, and it's a serious matter. So particularly with prosthetic urology, I think you want to find, if you're a consumer and you have the problem of erectile dysfunction, I think you want to find a very experienced surgeon. And so as we sort of get more of these centers out there, we should have one in every country, but it takes time because they have to be very special people before they win uh, the designation and are allowed to use the logo of Center of Excellence for penile implants. Well, Dr. Hamdan is certainly a skilled surgeon, but we noticed at his Center of Excellence that he's surrounded by an expert crew as well. And that's um, on top of his surgical skills, a definitive must have criteria. Uh, some his his right hand uh, to scrub and prepare uh, the patients with him, but also uh, skilled professionals to prepare the device. What are the what's the blend uh, that lowers at minimi minimizes uh, the infection rate at Dr. Hamdan's center and allows him to uh, to offer a, a treatment that's uh, hassle free for his patient? Well, uh, the obvious thing is that uh, if you're going to do a lot of penile implants, you have to get quick at it. And, and quick is good because uh, the longer the incision is open, uh, the more likely the bacteria are to fall into the incision and perhaps cause a device infection, which in our business is a disaster. So yes, uh, a man or a woman who does a lot of prosthetic urology develops a good team around him or her. So they need to have uh, an expert from the device manufacturer side and someone in the OR who are really well acquainted with the device. Is that it? Well, I mean, there's many, many aspects to it, but the, uh, the center of excellence generally excels at all of it. Thank you, Dr. Wilson. Thank you. Thank you.